There's yttrium, ytterbium, actinium, rubidium, aboran, gadolinium, niobium, iridium, and strontium, and silicon, and silver, and samarium, and bismuth, chromium, lithium, beryllium, and barium. Welcome back. In the last video, we talked about ethylene and where we actually get ethylene from, so the industrial source, which was mostly petroleum. In this video, we're going to cover the next stop point, which is all about what ethylene actually gets used for and why it gets used for those kind of products. I'll read the actual dot point. It says, identify the ethylene because of its high reactivity of its double bond is readily transformed into many useful products. So we have to identify the ethylene, so ethylene itself, because of the high reactivity of its double bond, can be used to make useful products. And that's what we'll talk about in this video. But before I start, I'll quickly compare plastic pellets to ethylene itself. So you might know what plastic pellets are. These are basically our foundation our first source, and all these plastic pellets, we can make all kinds of plastic. I'm going to compare plastic pellets to ethylene. So with plastic pellets, if I were to tell you that this actual picture here represents our plastic pellets, and more or less 90 or more percent of your plastics that you touch on a daily basis, which in plastics make up most of our life, come from these plastic pellets, you might be surprised, because they don't look, I mean, your keyboards or your cooking utensils, your plastic containers, your plastic chairs, your plastic appliances, they don't, don't look like plastic pellets. But this is the core, the first part of making plastics. And same with ethylene, like ethylene is actually really important. It's in a lot of subs in a lot of different products you can find ethylene. But you might be surprised because ethylene itself is a gas, colorless gas, and ethylene doesn't come across as being so important. But in this video, I'll show you why it's actually quite important as well. And the only actual place that you might be exposed to ethylene by itself, so the, the original form of ethylene, which is the gas form, on a daily basis, is when it comes to food ripening. So, for example, here we have a ripened banana. And with these ripened bananas, they actually ripen because of ethylene. Ethylene makes them ripen. So what happens is ethylene is a gas, and it gets produced as they ripen, and ethylene makes the ripen even further. And once this actually has ripened, you're going to have ethylene molecules, gas molecules going to the next banana and ripening this as well. So all fruit ripening, banana and different fruits, all are due to ethylene. So next time you actually have a banana sitting somewhere which is quite ripened, you know what's actually happening. You, these ripened bananas will produce these ethylene molecules which will float across to the next fruit and ripen that as well. So this is where we're exposed to ethylene on a daily basis. But the other ones might be less obvious, so I'll go for them now. So, oops. So we, here we have our ethylene, and with ethylene, so the actual point says, because of the higher activity of its double bond, it's, it's really transformed into many useful products. So this double bond here, this is our ethylene, obviously, and because of its high double bond, so it's very reactive double bond, it produces many useful products. And this double bond, if we look at it from Lewis dot structure, it has four electrons. Now this has lots of electrons, and if you can imagine anything that loves electrons, anything that is called electronegative loves electrons, if they were to look for a place where they might want to go and attach to, they would be quite likely to want to go here because there are so many electrons there. So any compound or any element that loves electrons would be attracted to ethylene molecules because they have so many electrons in one place. And exactly that's why we have that reactivity happening. Remember, reactivity is all about producing reactions, chemical reactions with different substances. And ethylene is likely to make form these substances, these compounds, because it has lots of electrons and will attract anything that loves electrons. Right, so I'll go over four examples. Even though there's lots of equations here, you don't have to worry too much about the equations. I'm going to, just going to use the equations to show you what the stuff bond does. So here, for example, what we have in our first step, and I'm going to go over vinyl chloride much more in the future. Vinyl chloride is just a different um, polymer that gets used to make plastics. I'm going to go over this equation much more in the future. But here we have our ethylene. So this was our ethylene, C2H, C2H4. So the ethylene. And first we have a quick reaction with chlorine. So the substitution reaction. So this was our original ethylene. And now all that happened because of this reaction where we had chlorine and a water and an oxygen molecule coming across. We have no more hydrogen, one that's gone, but instead we have a chlorine. But now this was the original ethylene structure and with a chlorine attached. And what happens next is this double bond will actually break and form something called a polymer. And polymer just means we have 
lots of them attached end by end. So you're going to see not just one, this is one monomer, but you're going to see having lots of them attached end by end. But the way this works is you're going to have this breaking, this is all bond breaking, and it's going to form new bonds. This same bond is going to be used to form new bonds with new monomers. And that's how we can go from one single one to many. And vinyl chloride gets used in plastics, for, so it's mostly used in plastics, the products we use, are produced from vinyl chloride, and plastics such as rubber hoses, rubber hoses, pipes, electrical insulation, all these kind of products come from the chloride and the way, the reason why we can make that is because of the higher activity of the double bond of ethylene which was in, in the original structure of vinyl chloride. Our next one is ethylene glycol and you don't really need to remember these equations just know that we have our double bond here, this is our ethylene structure, our original ethylene structure. What's going to happen is we're going to have this oxygen molecule come across and break this double bond and this is called an addition reaction because we're adding this oxygen molecule into the actual C2H4 structure and now I can see here it's added across. So this was the addition reaction. But what you can also see is the double bond is no more, it's broken. Right, so here a single bond, here double bond and that's the first step to produce ethylene glycol that was just um, ethylene oxide and then what happens is we have that ethylene oxide which was this here and we add a water molecule in a hydration reaction, we have that cross. And then what happens is we produce, produce this, which is ethylene glycol. And it has the same structure as ethylene, but just two hydroxide groups on either end, hydroxide. And it has this here in the middle, which is just a single bond, right? It was originally it was a double bond, the ethylene had a double bond, but now it broke the double bond to make sure you can actually come and have two of these across. And the only way that was possible by breaking the double bond. And now we can use this. So this is actually quite often used to make things like antifreeze to prevent freezing, as the name would suggest. Also, this is used to make PET. And PET is basically all of your bottles, your plastic bottles, many of them are made out of PET. This is the very widely used plastic. And then also we can make out of this, we can make nylon. And not nylon, but polyester. Polyester is obviously used to make clothing, for example. So these are some of the products that we can make from ethylene glycol. The reason why we can make ethylene glycol is because of the higher activity of the double bond. Also we have polyethylene. I'm going to talk about polyethylene a lot, but this is a monomer. And this monomer just means one unit. And this here is the ethylene monomer. So this is the ethylene as you can see. Okay, now C2H4. And it has these double bonds. And what's actually going to happen is they're going to break these double bonds. So these are broken now here. You can only have single bonds. But what that allows us to do is allows us to actually attach them end by end. So these are the new bonds that are formed that actually bind these monomers together to form a polymer. Polymer means many, monomer means more one. And we have this structure here. This is just the way you write monomers, uh, polymers, sorry. So this is our ethylene monomer. And you have these brackets across because that means it might just not be one, it might be many. And this N stands for how many. So for example, if we have a 10 here, that means there's 10 of them chained end by end. If it's 50, it means 50 are end by, chained end by end. And you should actually know how to, I'm going to go over that again in future videos, but you should know how to actually write polymers, like what kind of notation you use. And now, what does polyethylene get used for? Well, it gets used for lots of plastics. So I'm going to cover all different plastics that I could produce in different videos, but just be rest assured that the vast majority of our plastics has something to do with polyethylene. And the, originally, the reason why we can make polyethylene is because of the higher activity of double bond. And also we've got ethanol. And we have our original ethylene molecule here with this highly reactive double bond. What happens is we have a water molecule coming across and breaking the double bond and then attaching to the structure. And now we have something called ethanol. And that ethanol looks like this. So we had the first original structure was C2H4. But now we've added that water molecule across. And this gives it new properties. So we use it to make alcohol. Ethanol itself is actually an alcohol. We use it to make antiseptics, so to kill bacteria and such. And also we use it to use it as it's a really good solvent. It's also a really good solvent. So these are some of the properties, some of the uses of ethanol. And anyway, when it comes to dot, that actual dot point, it says identified ethylene because of its higher activity of its double bond is readily transformed to many sort of products. 
So without that double bond, without that reactivity of that double bond, we wouldn't be able to make polymers or we wouldn't be able to attach different groups like your hydroxide groups or your water molecules into the actual structure, which gives it new properties to make different properties, different products. So for example, we use vinyl chloride to make plastics, rubber hoses and pipes. We use ethylene glycol to make antifreeze PET, which is a form of plastic and polyester. We use polyethylene to make lots of different plastics. We use ethanol to make alcohol, antiseptics, and solvents. So for this dot point, you should remember, you don't have to remember these equations, but you should know that we have, originally we have that ethylene molecule, we have something coming across it, forming a new product, and that new product gets used to make lots of different products. So you should remember these different, so for example, vinyl chloride, ethylene glycol, polyethylene, and ethanol. You should remember those names and what products they get used for, and just in a nutshell, how they get produced. So that something comes across that double bond, the original ethylene molecule, and making a new compound, which then gets used to make these different substances. But I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.